This is the cold weather. In my opinion, skateboarding is one of the greatest things I've ever done. Because the sense of achievement you get from doing it, it is mind-blowing, really. If people were to experience this, I think they'd be a lot more eager to see the sport in the limelight. I think the general public as a whole don't really respect us. It's kind of like anything, you just have to let the public see a bit more of it, good side of it, rather than just being like us ruining ledges and them complaining. They need to put like more events on and stuff because that makes the public actually watch. Like you seem to actually get a few just like normal members of the public come to skate events and like they don't really know what's going on, but when someone does something good they still like know to cheer and stuff and they kind of get a bit involved in it and it makes it i kind of think it makes it better for the sport almost like She was like, I am an undercover police officer and I am going to report to you. And then she said something else to me and then that woman with the pram turned her kid around and was like, hey, my kid just wants to watch you skateboard for a bit. If I was a youngster with a skateboard, it would be very, very tempting. It's a bit like being in a sweet shop and not being allowed to go in, isn't it? But ideal flat surface if you were a skateboarder, I would have said. But I can understand how the authorities have thought it wise because of the public, the danger of the public. So perhaps if there was a skate park somewhere in the centre for the youngsters, it might be a good idea. Um, people just say, oh, just go to a skate park or something. But normally we just find somewhere that people aren't really bothered, like here for example. It just doesn't seem like the council wants skateboarders to be integrated within towns because they put skate stoppers everywhere, but nobbles on rails. When you get to a level that you're confident enough with those things, they can be a lot of fun. So I think we need to develop more of an understanding for each other, skateboarders to the public and the council and vice versa, and then we can get a decent compromise out of the situation to incorporate everybody. There's not a lot of people hanging out here, is there really? I suppose you could sit on here, but it's just beautiful to skate, isn't it? It could be. If there wasn't the cracks and the addition of the skate stoppers, it could have been somewhere fun for like everyone's game. But I suppose this whole place probably cost quite a lot of money in redevelopment. There is a pros and cons, I guess, of having a place like this. I was the same when I was younger, I used to do skateboarding, a bit of BMXing, and it's just not doing any, any harm, are they? It does appear that the public do enjoy what we do. It's seen on the streets more every day than it ever has been, I think. If councils included skate parks within the community, we're not going to feel as though we're being neglected by the council. I mean, Bridport Skate Park is definitely an example that the council don't do anything. I mean, we've got to go down there ourselves and sort it out.
Skate park is definitely a hub of youth activity. Everybody's interested in the same same things down there. And everyone wants to achieve the same goals and um, have fun with their mates. I mean, what's not good about having a skate park that promotes that kind of thing in the youth? companies have been pressing for more youth opportunity by building skate parks. Skateboarders and BMXs in line as well they all have very good things to offer, as proved by Dorchester, probably one of my favourite skate parks. The, the fact that this park here in Dorchester has been put in such a central location, the message I think that sends to both the community and the skate park users is that the community is proud of the skate park, and proud of the skaters, you know, that they are a valid part of the community. It's an amazing resource. When you see how well the skate park is, it's, it's astonishing. In the summer, there are literally hundreds of, of people here. It, it doesn't cost much to maintain it, you know, but if litter collection, is, as, a, as a leisure resource, it's really cheap to run. It's also, we found that over half of the users took up skateboarding or BMXing as a result of having this park here. So it's encouraging young people into sport at a time when nationally uh, young people are, are not taking up sport, you know, elsewhere. So I think, it, I think it's great. I think it's, yeah, I'd recommend them everywhere. Crime has reduced by about 33% in that area, which the police are amazed by, I can imagine. It's been a real success from the point of antisocial behaviour. The levels have significantly re reduced in Dorset North, they've been reduced by about 33 percent as you said. Other areas of the town are also down. I think that's because the, the young people have somewhere to go, they can watch their friends, their mates, whilst they're skateboarding. It's the place to meet and to be seen at. As a result of that, they're not hanging around in the town centre, they're not hanging around outside shops. They actually have a place that they can call their own, a place and a purpose to be at. Since it's been built, I would say people have been so positive and the town is really, really proud of it. My ideal is that each significant town, village, whatever, should have a, a park such as we have here in Dorchester. It costs about £100 to pay for the building, which is not cheap, that's a lot of money. People think that young people on boards or bikes are going to cause problems, actually, for behaviour. And actually, the proof of the is that this park has been open for four years, four years and, we, and we have had so few so problems. Problem. There seems to be a very great camaraderie over there. I've had friends take their grandchildren over there, quite small, and they've been very pleased to see that the older ones will stop and, and help them and, and give them sort of instruction, and they've been very pleased about that. They all work together, you know, they look after each other, they, they take turns. Backside pivot. Excuse me, we are going to move. Seeing people, uh, you know, they're obviously really dedicated to their sport. I think it's really actually helped bring up the impression of young people in the town, and that's, that's fantastic. Look at this park, it's been in the ground four years, there isn't even any graffiti yeah. on it, you know. It's, it's another example of the fact that in, in the last five years especially, local councils, youth services, they've all become really switched on to the fact that the skate park community is actually a really positive environment for young people and it's something that should be encouraged. I think young people have to lead this. They have to lead these projects. They have to want it for themselves. There's no better clout than young people talking together as a single voice to, to get their message across. You know, my mission in some ways is to get that message across to young people that they are a valid part of their community and that skateboarding is, is a valid pastime. And if, if there's a demand that can be evidenced and highlighted and there's a positive outcome to providing something that fulfills that demand, there are, there are pots of money that can be spent on making it happen. You know, do things the right way, highlight the demand, form a group, get questionnaires out there, canvas the rest of the community, and make it happen, man. It's just about having more respect for young people and their views, and, and, and taking the time to, to go and find them out, rather than kind of sitting in your office and waiting for young people to come to you. Go to where the young people are, and meet them on their own terms. Right, although these outdoor parks are amazing, Britain doesn't have the greatest weather, 
The downside with this one is when it's wet, frosty, they can't use this part. And I think by having a variety of parts, some indoors, allow everybody to have a go all the year round. Every winter, the same thing comes back up. We need more indoor skate parks, but it's it's a it's a really difficult thing to to create a profitable indoor skate park. And the reality is that the kids are all crying out for it. But when you tell them they have to pay a tenner a day to ride, they're not interested. I'd actually like to see some landlords, agents coming forward and offering redundant or empty um, factory premises, industrial units that they could be temporarily used by young people, perhaps during the winter period, or between lets. So a good example of an indoor facility is in Ripport. It's called Trick Factory. Been going for about 10, 12 years. I've only been going there for about six or seven, so I've only seen about half of its lifespan. But to me, it's a life-changing facility. The amount of hours that have been put in by everybody to keep that place running, to get it going in the first place, is just phenomenal. It started off as a, just a place for Rob to go and ride his bike. And it's now changed into people from all over the world, let alone the country, have ridden this park just because it's become so renowned. I think the council need to think about what they're doing and invest within the parks that we already have that are indoors, let alone build new ones yet, because these places are priceless for the growth and the lifespan of these sports. My name's Robert Ridge. I'm 40 years old and I've been running the Trick Factory since March 1999. When, when we set up, it was really uh, myself and a handful of other people. The, the, the benefit of being here now for 10 years plus is that no one can really turn around and say it's a good idea but we really don't think it's going to work. Uh, that was the sort of thing we were up against in the early years. We simply charge what we charge, um, not to make a profit, just to break even and pay our overheads. We're actually set up here as a not-for-profit organisation. We still have to pay every year, uh, I think it's a thousand pounds plus, to the council for effectively nothing. The very fact that people have to pay to come and use the place means firstly they're enthusiastic about the sport and it sort of acts as a filter because we don't get people just sort of um, loitering here. We're contained within four walls and I think a lot of parents like the idea of that, that the place is, is monitored and it's sort of being looked after and people here hopefully are looked after as well. If you do come off up there, there's actually a bit of give, a bit like a gym floor. It's a little bit springy. Places like Dorchester, uh, I sure as hell don't like falling on them. This is a wicked place. I mean, I've come in here for the last six years rubbish to see it gay. Community is everything in a town. Everything. If you don't have that social structure, like, it's not going to work, is it? Because if people aren't getting along, pointless. <laughs> For the greater good, for the greater good.